What up, players? It's Warboss Tail up in his mug. Welcome to my How to Paint a Bowman for House Stark. If uh, you are going to be following me along with this Idic Beers 2015 painting challenge, I'm doing a Game of Thrones themed Bretonian army. And here is my first test model for the House Stark in the north of Westeros. It is a loyal bowman from the House Stark. So you're going to be using Dryad Bark. Eshin Grey, Steel Legion Drab, XV88, Bugman's Glow, Dark Reaper, Agrax Earthshade, and that's it. So the first thing I did was I primed my model. You might notice that my model here is kind of standing at the front of his base. I purposely did that because when I'm ranking these guys up, it's easier to line them up if the guy in the back is standing at the front of the base and the guy in the front is standing on the other side. So it's a practical way of, of lining these models up. You saw that the first color we're gonna be using is Steel Legion Drab, and we're basically gonna be painting the fur, the fur shirt that this guy is wearing over. So I, I figured that I was looking at all of the, the models and you could really do this color scheme with some minor alterations, but with any of the models in the Bretonian range. So in their Bowman range, I mean, you, you've got four different body types. And uh, the good thing about it is that the torsos and the arms and, the, and the, the legs are all connected. It's one piece, so you don't have to worry too much about it. You just have to think about, okay, because they're all in one sculpt, you're only gonna have a limited number of body types. So that means you're gonna need to vary it up with the choice of heads that you give them, and you're gonna need to vary it up, vary it up with your uh, painting choices, your color choices, rather. So I decided to give this guy a nice shaggy brown animal pelt to start with. And then we're going to go to Dark Reaper. Now, you're going to notice that my Dark Reaper is pretty abysmal, and I think it's one of the colors that didn't really make the move very well. Um, I, it was at about halfway down, maybe 25 to, to 50 percent. I can't remember how much was left in the pot. But when I opened it just now and I looked at it, almost all of it was completely dried. I decided I didn't want to stop the video. I wanted to keep recording. So I basically took some water on the edge of my paintbrush and I'm doing this while I'm t talking and I uh, got as much of it from the bottom as I could. And you can see when you put it on, it's not a base paint anyway, it's not a foundation paint, it's a layer paint, which means it's going to be thinner anyway, the pigment's going to spread, it's not going to cover very well, but because I had to add some water to it, it, it does that even more. And unfortunately, this is not the best example of this color. Since filming this video, I picked up some new paints, and Dark Reaper was right there at the top of my list, so we are definitely going to fix this problem, but as I'm recording this, I just keep saying to myself right now, oh man, I can't believe I didn't think to to open up and check because this wasn't a paint that I normally use unless I'm unless I'm doing some, you know, I think the High Elf Shadow Warriors use this, use a use this color and I think um, my Grenadiers for the Death Corps Krieg they're the the fellows with the darker great coats use this as a base color but uh, you can also use if you don't have dark reaper you could also use incubi darkness as another good color stick it on scale green has just a little bit too much green and it makes it look a little bit teal not as blue and we want a really gray blue kind of color so now we're doing dryad bark you'll notice I'm going to try to paint these guys up as close to the HBO Game of Thrones series as possible. And there is not a lot of color, especially for the, the Men of the North. It's a lot of black, grays, browns, and uh, I decided to do 
a lot of that with this model and each house each great house that you fight for has a has its own predominant color so the Starks the house Stark in the north is uh, kind of this dark blue I, I the only reason I, I think so because uh, when you look at the shields for the Game of Thrones uh, the heraldry their shield is is like gray and white kind of like snow but um, when I'm, I was looking online for some inspiration and a lot of the pictures I found had some of the common soldiers not the Starks themselves but the common soldiers in in their force have these dark blue cloaks that look very very much like Dark Reaper so if you Google online and uh, look at some of the images I think the picture I'm I'm referring to right now is when uh, King Robert in season one and like the first episode comes to visit the Starks up in the north and a lot of the the soldiers standing around the Stark family have these uh, really dark blue cloaks and so that's kind of what I'm basing this color on I know their shield is like I said, it's going to be white, so any shield motifs, any heraldry is going to go onto a white shield, but for the color of the actual house, I'm going to go with that dark blue. Bugman's Glow is a, is a tricky paint to use because it's a lot more peachy colored and more pink than the old Talarn Flesh, which I thought was perfect. If you have Talarn Flesh, you can... Thank your lucky stars because that is, I think, the perfect flesh color to use as a base. And uh, I know there's lots of colors like it, but uh, I prefer, I, I'm just kind of used to the Games Workshop colors. Oh, I think this is where the lady boss came in to see what I was doing and she wanted to make a little cameo. <laughs> that was her hand. And um, what was I saying? Yeah, Talarn Flesh is such a great old color. I really wish they still had something like it. Bugman's Glow is just a little bit too peachy and it's more, it's not as thick as Talarn Flesh. It's more runny and watery, which is okay because it'll cover easier than, I mean, the old Talarn Flesh was so thick that if you painted it straight from the pot like many beginners would do, then you'd have a lot of trouble with it. Okay, Dryad Bark next. Again, rather. So what I decided to do was I'm looking at the model and I'm thinking, oh, if this was a, a Night's Watch guy, then we could kind of kind of leave it around here. We'd have to darken the brown, but the, the the black sleeves and the black leggings look pretty good. And uh, what I decided to do was take the dried bark now and to make it more of a of a soldier in in a, a Westeros army rather than a, a Night's Watchman is to add a little bit more of this dark and dirty chocolatey brown which is what Dryad Bark is. <clears throat> and I think I decide, yeah, that I'm gonna do a, a brown belt it's a little bit later in the video when I decide that instead of a brown belt, I'm going to do a uh, an eschen gray, like a dark brownish gray kind of belt color instead. But this is still a good example of testing a color out, you know, in my head. When I was planning this video, I thought, oh, brown, like we'll, we'll try to keep the colors very minimal and uh, very muted so that the blue really sticks out and the bow make it a little bit of a brighter brown so that it sticks out <clears throat> and then it's a perfect example of deciding while you're painting to change change things up and go off the script so that's uh, that's what that is there Yeah, and you'll notice that I'm, I'm quite impatient. I didn't want to wait for the Dark Reaper hood to dry before I got onto this brown strap here. That's okay. 
Celestial Gray is going to be our base color for the shield. So what I'm thinking for doing the knights is having the shields and the iconography be the black wolf's head against the gray shield, but then having their actual colors be this dark blue. And uh, I, I actually tested it out on a knight model earlier today, and it looks it looks pretty cool. It looks pretty wicked. The thing is, when you look at the Game of Thrones series, which is what I'm really trying to base these models off of, it's like a mix of the series and the books, even though the uh, the books are a lot, obviously, a lot more detailed and in-depth, is I wanted to make them very accurate, and there's not many examples of how stark, the House Stark um, knights, as it were. Steel Legion Drab is going to be the color that we use for the sleeves here. I think it's uh, somewhere in Season 2 when um, Rob is leading his army into the south when uh, his his advisors and stuff, I might have to take cues off of their, their costumes and wardrobe, but really for the knights, uh, the knight figures, they, they don't really match, you know, the Bretonian range is not really uh, perfectly uh, interchangeable with the Game of Thrones theme, but we're gonna try and make it work, you know, so. Uh, we're, we're gonna try and make it work. I think we can definitely do some things, especially for those of you who painted Bretonians before or have collected them, as we move on to Eschen Grey, you'll know that there is some uh, a great variety of heads on the knights in the knights kit, and one of the heads is uh, that full helmet with with stag horns on top, and I think that would be great to represent like one of the Baratheon fighters, maybe even Renly or Stannis Baratheon. Depending on where uh, where we set the fiction, because Game of Thrones is is it's got a whole very very detailed history where we set the models. It could even be the great Robert Baratheon, King Robert, before he becomes the king when he's still fighting and uh, before he gets all rotund. But yeah, if you have not read Game of Thrones. Then um, I, I came to the series by reading the book first, the books, all the books up until I think the fourth one. I kind of stopped when the fourth one came out. Uh, this was like a long time ago, maybe 10 years or so back. And I loved them. I absolutely, totally fell in love with it. This was when I was taking my little hiatus from Warhammer. And I remember reading the books and thinking that, oh man, I used to collect these little plastic guys, and it would be fun to do something like that with the Game of Thrones theme. Look at me now, all these years later, actually doing it. The Eschen Grey that I was using to paint the stockings, that's going to be our, um, like our, our separate spot color. So you've got this medium blue brown with a Steel Legion drab, you've got the dark brown, and then you've got two spot colors, you've got the hood which is that blue, dark dark gray blue, and you've got uh, this gray brown. Lead Belcher is very, the silver is very minimal on this model. It's actually only the tips of his bow here and the uh, buckle of his belt, which is good. You know, some models like Necrons or Empire Knights, like they are nothing but silver, and it's nice to have a model that's a lot of color. It's got a lot of color to it. Putting a little bit more XV88 now, you'll notice that there's this mold line on the back of that bow that I uh, didn't get to before the end of this video, so I actually cleaned it up since then but um, I know how mold lines are so aggravating. Yeah, so Eschen Grey, this is where we're gonna add a little bit more of that Eschen Grey color to the model by painting it onto the straps and the belts. This is just because I'm looking at the model now and I'm thinking it's just a little bit too brown. 
a little bit more gray will uh, break it up nicely. And now as I'm thinking about the colors, I'm thinking, you know, gray is also going to be what I'd like to use predominantly for a uh, house gray joy models. So um, we don't want to use too much of this gray color, but uh, like I said, again, it's, it's one of the two spot colors, but we really want the eye to go to the blue. So if I wasn't doing this exact color scheme, I might have gone with the, uh, instead of the hood being this blue color, I might have gone with the shirt or the uh, tunic, the um, uh, skirt part, or I might have gone with the sleeves. <clears throat> it's really up to you, especially because like I said earlier, you've got a bunch of identical sculpted models, so you're going to need to switch it up. And we're going to possibly having the same model, but the next time I paint it, instead of this hooded head, it could have a, a completely different head. Or it could have, uh, you know, the color scheme is going to be all switched around. Maybe instead of a brown wolf pelt over his uh, clothes, you'll have a, a gray wolf pelt. And this eschen gray just to color the uh, handle of the bow. Sorry about the autofocus on the camera doesn't quite know yet where to where to look. And yeah this is just a look at the model before I let it dry for a little bit. And then when we come back we're gonna get into the shades. Oh yeah and then I saw the stitches on this guy's uh, gauntlet or bracer. Let me paint that up. Okay, so this is a couple hours later, and I'm starting with Agrax Earthshade. Just all over the model. Even the Celestial Gray, I normally don't like to paint any gray, like gray or whites. Uh, I don't like to give it the the dirty shade of this brown Agrax Earth shade, but I've decided for uh, for this instance we'll do that, and then when we highlight it back up, we'll just make sure that we highlight it with uh, a nice bright color. You want to make sure when you're painting on your shades that you don't leave any in the cracks and the crevices. Oops, and that you move the paint around as much as you can. So I'm really enjoying this Game of Thrones themed Bretonian project. Please follow me, continue to follow me here on YouTube as well as on the Roundtable uh, Bretonian Forum website. I will post a link there in the description. And uh, thanks again. Don't forget to hit subscribe and check out my website, warbosstastudios.com. Thanks for watching, everybody. Laters!